To end off this introduction course for the gameplay ability system, we're going to lightly touch on letting the AI do some stuff. Because so far we've been uh, working entirely with the player character here, and in theory we could like attack this uh, enemy character and we could give him HP and stuff like that. We're not going to bother too much with any of that. I hope that by now you understand how to do that. But I do want to go over how to use gameplay abilities on enemies. It's not that different from the way you would use it for a player character. There's a couple of things here though that I do uh, want to show off. So let's uh, set this guy up real quick to have a behavior tree. I'm going to go through this real quick because it's not a behavior tree tutorial, uh, obviously. So what we'll do here is we'll make a new AI controller. In the event graph on begin play, we will run behavior tree. We will make a behavior tree asset from the artificial intelligence uh, behavior tree. We'll call that a BT enemy. And to go along with that, we'll also make a blackboard, which we'll call BB enemy as well. We'll set the AI controller class to the AIC uh, class that we just made. So it will now run this behavior tree, uh, to which we'll add a selector and uh, I'll add a task simply just move to. And in the blackboard, I will add a object here, which will uh, be the player. The object type will be not any kind of object, but we'll specifically uh, say that this is an actor, which will set in the uh, behavior tree here. So we can get the blackboard set value as object. And the value for that object will just be the get player. So now we have a reference uh, directly to the player. But now there's one more thing that I want to do before we uh, get into like making tasks and decorators and stuff uh, to make this guy work. And that is we actually want the blackboard here and the behavior tree to be able to access our gameplay ability system components because all of the tags that we apply uh, with our abilities, like when a ability says, hey, apply the burning tag whenever something gets hit with this attack and stuff like that, right? We've gone over how those tags work. Those tags don't get added to the actor itself. Those tags get added to the ability system components. So we need a reference specifically to that because you can check the tags on that component as a decorator on this uh, behavior tree. So we will be making a other object here uh, which in this case we'll call uh, ABC for Ability System Component. And here we get into a little bit of trickery. Uh, I will show you. So if you add a decorator here, we can add a check gameplay tags on actor, which will check whether or not a given actor, which can just be uh, one of the actors to check here, just any of your keys that are set to being an actor, it will check whether or not it has any or all of the gameplay tags that you uh, supply it with. Now, you might be able to see that, hey, the ability system component is not actually in there, uh, but we do want to check the ability system components. And there's just a little bit of weirdness here. Even though the ability system component is a component and not an actor, we're still going to make this key into a actor type key. And this will work. It will just look at it as if it is an actor. And now we are able to uh, select that in the drop-down menu. And we can still set the value of this key to the ability system components. And everything will be fine. That just gives us an easy way in a behavior tree to check for tags that might have been applied or removed by the gameplay ability system. Uh, but we do also need to uh, give that a value. So we'll copy over the uh, set of value objects node in our AI controller here uh, and we'll uh, use the same blackboard and we'll make the literal name here uh, ABC because it's ability system components that's what we call that thing and, and now we need to get a reference to that component to set the value as that object and the best way to do that will be uh, get control pawn so this will just get us a reference to the pawn that we are currently controlling. And from there, we can get ability system component. This is just something that you can do on any actor. 
very easily. And if it has an ability system component, uh, this will be the value of that component. If it doesn't, uh, this will just return a empty reference. Okay, so that's the first thing that we can do with the gameplay ability system uh, together with AI, is if we set this up with the ability system component as being a actor type key, uh, we can now use the tags on it to drive some of the logic in our behavior tree. It's very, very nice. Now, let's make a task uh, for us to execute a gameplay ability. And I'm going to do this in two separate ways. The first way is probably what you're thinking about right now. So let's make a new task, call this BTT um, do ability, something along those lines. And this will be fairly easy. We can just say function, um, receive, execute. The owning actor will get the ability system component from. And in there, we will uh, try activate ability by class, at which point uh, afterwards we'll go into a uh, branch. And the return value here is just whether or not the ability was actually executed. So if this is for any reason relevant information, you can use this to say, hey, if this was true, uh, we finish execute with a success and if that for any reason uh, didn't actually execute the ability we can finish execute with a uh, non-success could be relevant in whatever ai you are building and then we can simply just promote this to a uh, variable and say this is the ability to activate and if we make that public, we now have a task that will just execute any ability we put into it, or at least try to execute any ability we put into it on the enemies that are running this behavior tree, which is fantastic, right? So we can say um, we want to move to the player. But for instance, if we get within a certain distance of the player, we might want to uh, do a ability. So we can say bt task do ability and we can put a decorator on this which uh, only triggers when we are within a certain range so let's real quick make that because it's actually remarkably easy to do so so now we have that decorator here and we can simply say the distance to allow is 250 and the thing that we're checking against is the player so now it will only do this ability when this enemy is within 250 units of the player. And we can put any ability in here, even abilities that this enemy does not have. And that is important to understand because you need to still grant the abilities to the enemy in order for it to be able to execute them. So the way here on begin play, we have this array that's giving the abilities, that's granting the abilities to our player character in order for the player to actually be able to execute those abilities, you do need to do that for your enemy characters as well. So you need to either do something like this, which just is an array which goes through a for each loop that grants all of the abilities in the array to the character, or you need to make something that dynamically gives certain abilities at certain times. That is entirely up to what your game needs and what you want to make. You probably already came up with this being possible, right? So let's instead of doing a ability by class, which kind of is limiting because now we necessarily have to make different behavior trees for different enemies with different abilities. But maybe we want to make one behavior tree that can just be like the normal basic enemy, but those enemies want to execute different types of abilities. Well, that is actually something that we can very easily do. And instead of doing the activating ability by class, what we can do is we'll remove all that and we'll try activate ability by tag instead. This is very much something that you can also do on your player. It's less useful on the player, because usually on the player you want to execute a specific ability with a specific input, and not something that is seemingly kind of random, but you can do this if it suits your specific production needs. This takes in a gameplay tag container. Uh, in our case, we're just going to promote this to a variable like we did before. Uh, we'll call this um, activate ability with tag. And what this will do is it will take any tags that you put in here, look at the ability system component that it's trying to execute this on, and check does it have any abilities with this tag. Because remember, if we open up uh, just any random ability, let's just like do hero attack one. In the uh, class defaults here, the abilities themselves can have tags. 
This one is tagged as action.dash, which definitely probably pile ID because it's an attack, so we probably want to make uh, something like action uh, attack for this one. But you can make this much, much wider. So what we can do is uh, let's just uh, add a sub tag here to attack and say attack.magic and then even dot fire. So now we can add that new tag and we've got in our actions, we have got attacks, specifically magic attacks and specifically fire attacks. So if I have a fire spell for like five different types of enemies, what I can do is I can just all tag them as being a fire attack and tell this behavior tree through, uh, where is it? Through this ability to just execute a, uh, in this case, a fire attack. So we can say action, uh, magic, fire. And now we'll just look through the list of abilities that whatever character is running this behavior tree has and execute the first fire ability that it finds. And that is actually an important thing to realize. It doesn't pick a random one out of all of the things that fits the description. It just goes through in the order that you granted the abilities to the character and checks one by one, does this one fit the tag that I'm working with? No, I'm moving on to the next and the next and the next until it finds one. So if you have multiple abilities with the same tag, so if it has like three different uh, fire spell attacks, it will always just execute the first one that it finds. So that is relevant. If you wanted to randomly take one of a few abilities, this whole tag system starts to work a little bit less um, in your favor. But now we can use this very basic behavior tree on a number of different enemies with a number of different abilities and it will still work. So we don't need to split up uh, our code through like five different behavior trees, the only difference in which will be the actual abilities that the characters are executing because they can all share this behavior tree because the behavior tree isn't actually saying what exact ability it should be executing. So that's been the gameplay ability system uh, basic scores. Maybe at some point in the future we'll come back to uh, the gameplay ability system in a secondary course, which might go a little bit more into things like making your own gameplay tasks. Because in the gameplay abilities that we've been using so far, uh, we've been using things like this apply root motion and constant force and uh, play montage and wait and that kind of stuff. Uh, these are all tasks that the gameplay ability system provides you with, but you can very much, if you wanted to, of course, code your own. Uh, that's a little bit more advanced. And for the most part, I actually do think that the things that the engine just provides you with are going to cover you in like 99.99% of cases. So for the most part, I don't think it's too relevant to cover in this. Maybe in a potential future follow-up course to this we can go a little bit more into depth with the ai uh, i don't really want to go too much in depth with the ai right here because it doesn't really add anything new beyond what i've shown in this video in terms of concept but let me know if you do want me to cover something of that nature uh, more in depth just to see me going through it it probably won't have that much new information to it but it always could be useful if you want me to do it to just take you through and make something with all of the information that we have uh, covered in this series so for now that's going to be the end of this course but there might be a follow-up course at some point in the future i don't know when depending on how much interest there is for it as well so thanks everybody so much for watching this and uh, i will be back with uh, some new content uh, very very soon and a very big thank you to all of my Patreons. You can see them on screen right now. If you want to help out supporting the channel, there's a link down below in the description to the Patreon page. And a special thanks to my Cave Digger tier Patreons, Sergey Thomas, 